Hello, I'm Larry Kluger, Lead Developer Evangelist at DocuSign. Today I'll be talking about Builder Tool, a new style of API Explorer that we're working on for the DocuSign Developer Center. Okay, what's an API Explorer? In this slide, I'm showing a screenshot of a typical API Explorer from Dailymotion. It enables you to try out their API for listing videos on their site. In short, an API Explorer or API Playground enables you to try a company's API from the browser without writing any software or scripts. Note that some developer portals refer to their API reference documentation website as an API Explorer. The primary benefit of an API Explorer is that it enables you, the dev portal visitor, to quickly try out the company's API. The best API Explorers include typed forms with select boxes, check boxes, and similar user experience features to help you create correct API requests. This API Explorer also includes short form documentation with links to more extensive documentation. Some API Explorers use a text area for creating the API request. This has pros and cons. Benefits include the ability to easily save and reuse the request body. Also, an API request object that includes nested arrays and objects can be handled reasonably well with this format. But there are downsides. Other than an initial request skeleton, any additional request arrays, objects, or attributes must be carefully and correctly typed into the text area by the user. It's no longer a configuration via clicks type of tool. Here's a JSON request for the DocuSign eSignature REST API. As a block of JSON code, it has no guardrails. It's easy to miss a brace or bracket or to misspell an attribute name. And you'll notice the six levels of objects and arrays for even relatively simple requests like this one. In general, if the API includes many nested arrays or objects, using a form to describe the request object can become problematic. This screenshot shows DocuSign's current API Explorer, which uses forms. Note the presence of the additional rows of the tab types, which are there in case the developer wants to include them in the request, but which occupy screen real estate even when not used. Also, the four levels of nesting needed for even a relatively simple request. Overall, this API Explorer does a good job, but I wanted to see if I could develop a new paradigm. So goal number one is to create an API Explorer that offers click configuration while at the same time cleanly supporting an API that uses deeply nested arrays and objects. I also wanted some additional features in the tool, include access to the API documentation, show the completed request as JSON, auto-program the request using SDK languages such as C Sharp, Java, and so forth, load pre-built examples and then enable the developer to modify them to meet her more specific needs, ability to save your work for reuse, and share your examples to help others. This is an important feature. The idea is to build an equivalent of JS Fiddler and similar tools. They enable a developer to easily respond to a Stack Overflow question, for example, with an answer that can be immediately tried out by the reader. My idea is that the new tool should enable our customer service developers, support engineers, and other developers to easily share solutions for using the DocuSign APIs. That all sounds good. Let's see a demo. Here's the current version of the Builder tool. On the far left is the Block Toolbox. You'll see it in action shortly. Next is the current diagram and its workspace, a set of blocks describing the API request. The blocks are ordered from top to bottom. The smaller blocks correspond to an individual attribute. A container block, such as the overall create envelope container or the document container, represents an API request object. Containers include one or more attribute blocks. Containers do not include other containers. Instead, the tool automatically organizes objects into arrays and other objects as allowed by the API's Swagger specification. The primary pane on the right side of the tool shows the output. The tool is currently showing the JSON version of the block diagram. The output is always live and is immediately updated when the diagram is changed. The small pane above the output pane is a status log. When the tool starts up, it contains the diagram you see here. Now I'll update the diagram with my name and an email address. You can see that the output is also updated. Let's send this envelope request. We need to first log in. 
Note the status window updates as the API requests are made to DocuSign. The tool communicates directly with the DocuSign eSignature system by using cores. There's no intermediate application server. Now we're switching over to the signing ceremony on the DocuSign server. After signing the envelope, we're brought back to the Builder tool. You can see the SAS logging, including the API responses from DocuSign. The Builder tool includes short form documentation for each API object and attribute. The documentation is shown when you hover over the block. Blocks have context menus, which provide a set of operations, including block du duplication, deletion, and display of a comment for the block. Let's duplicate the document block. We'll switch to using a different example document called blank.pdf. We'll also rename the document, and we need to update the document ID to avoid an API error. Next, let's open the tabs section of the block toolbox and then pick the date signed tab blocks. First, we add the containing block for date signed tab. Next, we add the page number, X and Y position, and document ID attributes. Next step is to set their values. Now, when we send a new envelope, the result is an envelope with two documents. The second one, a blank page, contains the date sign tab. Next, let's change the SDK language to Java. We can see the output window is updated to show a Java program, including all of the SDK calls for the current diagram. When we change the X offset for the Sign Here tab, the corresponding Java SDK call is also updated. The tool includes a list of pre-configured example diagrams. The examples include instructions, and DocuSign will add to the examples over time. Here is the feature, similar to the JavaScript Fiddler tool, to load examples from the internet and from local files. This will enable the developer community to provide solutions independent of DocuSign. When a diagram is opened, it can include its own comments and instructions. Saved diagrams can include documents and additional documents can also be loaded into the tool. Turning back to the block toolbox, the envelopes create call has over 100 objects that can be used. The complete set is in the A to Z section of the toolbox. The first sections of the toolbox show the most used object blocks. Let's add a certified delivery recipient. And you can see that it was also added to the Java source file.
Now we'll use the blocks context menu to open the blocks comment window. The comment will be stored with the diagram. Blocks can also be collapsed to save room in the diagram workspace. That's been a short tour of the Builder tool. Now I'll discuss its architecture and major components. The most important design goal is to provide a click and go API explorer that supports deeply nested API elements. There are several parts to the solution. Step A was the decision to use the open source Google Blockly library. The tool used the stock Blockly library with no changes, enabling easy updates to new versions of the library. The library is not hard to use. The documentation and the React example were very helpful. Step B was a decision to use the builder pattern for the blocks. With this pattern, each block is additive. Therefore, the builder tool user does not need to worry about arrays, child objects, grandchild objects, and so forth. The result is an intuitive arrangement of blocks to form even the most complicated API request. The blocks are ordered from top to bottom in the diagram. Each block affects the nearest, prior, appropriate object. Step C. Each block includes a small JavaScript function that outputs a section of the software. Altogether, the blocks create a fluent output program. This software pattern is also called chained methods. You can see that each method call against the object returns the object itself. Step D. An additional layer of software takes the fluent input and produces the JSON output. This software uses lookup tables generated from the Swagger file for the potential relationships between container objects. Recursion is fun. The Swagger file for the API defines the API's methods, objects, or attributes, types, and relationships. It includes documentation too. The DocuSign eSignature Swagger file is automatically produced by the platform software itself. DocuSign publishes a Swagger file for the eSignature API, and we have customers who use it to build their own customized tools. Due to the size of the DocuSign eSignature API and the included documentation, the Swagger file weighs in at almost three megabytes. Let's check out some more features of the Builder tool. If a container block is inserted in a wrong place and one of its possible parents is not present, then the error message shows the type of parent block that is needed. Also, a block is not allowed into a wrong container block. Note how gray preview locations are only shown for valid potential destinations of the block we're moving. Now we'll add the email tab block properly along with its attribute blocks. Let's test the envelope. It works, and we can see the email tab to the right of the signing tab. Next, we'll download the framework for the example. Here we're using node.js. Opening a terminal window, we unzip the file and use the npm install command to install the example's dependencies, including the DocuSign node.js SDK. The example framework includes an index.js file, which tells us to replace that file with the index.js file from the example from the Builder tool. Going back to the Builder tool, we download the example itself, the index.js file, and the next step is to edit the index.js file. We'll change the redirect URL to be the general DocuSign website. All done. Let's run the program. The program prints the URL for the signing ceremony from, from DocuSign on the console. 
Next, we'll open an incognito browser window and open the signing ceremony URL there. DocuSign opens, and we can see that the envelope was created correctly, including the email tab. After we complete the signing ceremony, we are redirected to the main DocuSign site as we requested. Note the event query parameter set to signing complete that the signing ceremony gave us. Back to the Builder tool, two more items to demonstrate. The example code includes the user's account ID and a current access token. Including the access token enables the developer to immediately try out the generated code. However, for production, the developer must update their application to use one of DocuSign's OAuth authentication flows. Automatic arrays and objects. We'll first remove all the blocks and switch to the JSON view. Note that when we only have a single document object in the request object, the builder software automatically creates an array. The array is required according to the Swagger file. In addition, there are a couple of objects defined by the Swagger file that only have objects or arrays as children. In other words, no scalar attributes. The builder tool automatically creates these objects too. Let's see two of them. The first occurs when we add a sign a recipient object. You can see that a recipient's object was automatically created. In addition, an array was created for the single signer recipient object. In the same way, when we add a sign here tab, a tabs object was created. The automatic object creation enables a simpler, easier to use diagram and Fluent software. As shown in the demo, the tool automatically creates arrays as needed. Here's an example of the Builder tool automatically creating an object to hold the signer's array. And the signer's array was automatically added to hold the signer object from the block. DocuSign uses the open source CodeGen software to auto-generate its SDKs from the Swagger file. In turn, the Builder tool uses recursion to auto-program the SDK source from the JSON, starting with the deepest leaf nodes. Just three methods are needed to adapt the auto-programmer's output to the different SDK languages. This part turned out easier than I expected. For example, you can see the deepest leaf node in the JSON on the left is programmed as the first SDK call on the right. The auto-programmer walks the JSON tree covering all branches to produce the SDK output. For strongly typed languages, such as the c -sharp example, the autoprogrammer includes the type information. The tool now autoprograms SDK calls for c -sharp, Java, PHP, Node.js, and Visual Basic. Support for more languages is planned for the first release. So, good news, the Builder tool has accomplished all of its design goals. Building the Builder Tool. I've mentioned the API's Swagger file several times. The raw Swagger file is not directly used in the Builder Tool. Instead, the data that's needed is extracted by a batch configuration app that's rerun for each new version of the Swagger file. The configuration app creates the JavaScript source for the blocks, the toolbox, and the relationship records. The tool itself is a single page React application with the DocuSign in house styling library. There are no significant server components. The tool makes direct calls to DocuSign via cores. One of my goals was to use the tool to experiment with browser-based software. I'm happy that I was able to process both documents and the diagram files entirely within the browser-based application. This includes creation of diagram files, including their documents, for download to the desktop from the browser-based builder tool. We showed an early version of the Builder tool to developer customers last year, and the feedback was positive. The tool includes an NPS survey and will enable developers to supply additional feedback. The first public release is planned for this summer, with publication of the source next year. That's it. Thank you very much.